So in this little pin here, we have a, a group of Rambouillet Merino cross weathers. Um, these weathers are in a, in a small pin and we've got a, a new guardian dog new to this, this operation. This dog is about a year and a half old and is in a small area for a bonding pin to get him accustomed to the area and accustomed to these sheep. Livestock guardian dogs aren't something that's super common to West Texas for bigger operations. They've been utilized in the United States since the 70s. Humans have used livestock guard dogs for, for many, many years. Uh, and they were a part of a, a herding culture. And so we are working with livestock operators who have some real problems with predation and uh, looking at the impacts of livestock guard dogs on those places. You mentioned bonding with the sheep. Tell us a little bit about how you, what the, what the procedure is to get these dogs to where they'll stay with these sheep and guard them. So bonding is a, is a way that we improve the likelihood that guard dogs are gonna bond to the animals that we intend them to protect. And so most people find that if you take a freshly weaned dog off his mother at eight weeks of age and put them into a, a small pen, say a half acre in size, with animals that are what it's gonna be with the rest of its life. And so from the time that that, that dog is two months old, uh, some people will go until they're four months old, some people will take it all the way to their eight months of age in that small pen to develop a strong bond between that dog and those animals. And then slowly that dog is put into larger and larger pastures and exposed to more and more things in its life so that it, it experiences them, understands that they're a part of that ranching enterprise. And so the ultimate goal is that dog will go into a pasture, remain with sheep, try and set up a territory, if you will, and, and either displace predators from that pasture or rangeland that they're currently on or at least deter them from getting in and trying to prey on those livestock. That's been some real interesting research you've been involved with. You know, people sometimes think, well, they're a guard dog, they're going to go out there and kill all the coyotes. I think you all have pretty much determined, like you said, that it's a territorial thing between canines, right? And basically having one large canine in an area sets up that territory so that the other canines just basically stay away, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way that works? Yeah, we're, we're looking into this and, and trying to learn more about it, uh, but definitely people that have used livestock guardian dogs for many, many years find that deterring predation is much more of what they do than actively going out and seeking out and eliminating or killing predators, is, is training the predators to not see your livestock as a food source. Uh, some interesting things that we're finding is that the range and their movement patterns, we're using GPS technology to monitor where they're going and what they're doing and, and often the, whatever pasture they're in with animals, they, they really work the outside uh, fence lines to establish that, that territory. And guard dogs have a lot of variety uh, in, the, in their patterns and how much they move. We saw some dogs would, would cover um, a home area, which is where they spend 95% of their time. Some of them might be 200 acres, some of it might be 1,200 acres. You know, some might travel three miles a day, some might travel seven miles a day. And so, uh, depending on where they're at and what they're doing, they really change their patterns. But they're in a, a very effective tool in predator control, and it's a tool that our industry is, is using more often and, and more frequently because we just don't have the neighbor right. uh, protection that we used to one. When there was the 1950s and there was 10 million sheep and everybody had some, uh, they kept their fences in good condition and they really kept predator populations down. Now there's not as many people running sheep and goats, there's not as many people controlling those predators. We have higher predator populations and, and folks have found that they need to find ways to take care of the problem without lethal control. What, what kind of breeds of dogs do you all usually use for guard dogs? I mean, they're not your traditional mm -hmm. stock dog, herding dog. They're, mm -hmm. they're a completely different type of dog. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, these dogs have been bred for thousands of years to do this specific purpose. 
and and you just there's a lot of variation in in dogs you know we have the chihuahua and the great pyrenees those are come from a similar background and so there was long history of breeding and so if we're using a livestock guard dog or if we're using a dog dog to guard livestock it needs to be of livestock guardian dog breeds so the great pyrenees um, the uh, anatolian shepherd the Oxbosch, the marima the commodore there's a half a dozen or more breeds that are that were traditionally used for that purpose and we strongly discourage people from using breeds that are that aren't of those with that said people say which breed is the best there's more variation what we found within breed than there is a cross breed and so some breeds have more tendencies but and and there's no harm in, in cross breeding within the guard dog breeds to get the specific purpose you want this dog here is is new this is is uh, fairly new to this little pen but he's been around humans a lot so they're not as big of a, a threat as say a coyote that was coming up into this pasture this dog would respond a lot differently um, would, would show some aggression but is also uh, keeping close watch of his flock this dog here was raised around people so that it's not fearful of people often they'll just come right up to you out in the pasture um, you used to some people said you can never pet them but we found that if they come up to you uh, look for a little bit of affection it's all right they just can't leave the pasture and look for affection so this dog's coming up he's gonna check me out see who I am then he goes and sees the stock and he's gonna move back towards them looking for other stimuluses and other things that that could be uh, looking to have a meal on one of the lambs that we're trying to raise so these these sheep one of the training processes of getting a guard dog is the sheep need to be uh, kind of bonded to the dogs as well you notice that these sheep kind of are a little bit fearful of it uh, they kind of step back and look at them but they didn't run to the other side of the pen the dog goes over finds a shady spot lays down and uh, is watching and looking over his flock one of the things that we really want to um, imprint upon guard dogs, if we can, is teaching them to respect fences and stay in an area that we put them into. This dog here is pretty good about it. Um, they're a big dog. They can climb over fences. They can go through small holes if they want to. But when they're a puppy and they're pretty young, if we can have them in good dog tight fences and never learn that behavior, they may never try it later on. Uh, this is again a new dog to this area. It was put in this pen on Saturday. Um, we are near people, near a highway. It's a good chance that the dog could get taken by somebody, get run over on the highway if it left the pen. So we like the fact that this dog is staying with these sheep. Even though it wasn't bonded with them, these are new animals to them. It's been bonded with livestock, so it's looking for livestock to protect wherever it's at. If it'll respect fences and stay in pens or pastures that we place them in, that increases the likelihood that the dog's not going to get into problems once it leaves the property or premise where it's supposed to be.